Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and I'm a family nurse practitioner and one of the NP instructors here at SMNP Reviews. I have cared for quite a few patients with thyroid conditions during my time as an FNP and I'm so excited to talk to you all about a couple of thyroid disorders commonly treated in primary care. And if you would like to take a deeper dive into this topic, you should check out one of our review courses. And also go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can continue to stay up to date on our latest videos. Let's get started. According to the American Thyroid Association, an estimated 20 million people in the United States have some form of thyroid disease. You may not have realized, but thyroid hormones help with every metabolic process in the human body, from cellular metabolism and protein synthesis to supporting normal growth and development in children even supporting cardiovascular, nervous, kidney, pulmonary, and hematopoietic systems function. You name it, thyroid hormones help with it all. Let's start by talking about the basic types of thyroid hormones we see in lab work that help make our diagnosis. TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, is responsible for stimulating thyroid hormone production by the thyroid. The first thyroid hormone is T4 also known as thyroxine, and it is used to help evaluate overall thyroid function. And then we have T3, or triiodothyronine, which is also used to evaluate overall thyroid function, but most of T3 is actually created in the liver from the conversion of T4 to T3. So typically, the TSH is going to be the first test that we order in primary care if we suspect or need to rule out a thyroid condition. If this comes back too high or too low, we will assess one or both of the other thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, to gather further clinical information. In the lab work of somebody who has a primary thyroid disorder, meaning that there is an issue within the thyroid itself, we will see an inverse relationship between the TSH and the thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. One of the most difficult things to understand about thyroid function is the biofeedback loop. In the thyroid, it happens to be a negative feedback loop, which means that as the production of one hormone goes up, the production of another hormone goes down. First, we start in the hypothalamus, which releases thyroid-releasing hormone, otherwise known as TRH. That then causes the anterior pituitary to release the TSH and that TSH works on, or stimulates, the thyroid to produce the T3 and T4 hormones, which are the active thyroid hormones. Once the levels of T3 and T4 are sufficient, then the hypothalamus can take a break until needed again to start the process over. And so to recap, an increase in T3 and T4 should cause a decrease in the release of TSH, because the thyroid does not need to be stimulated anymore. And to flip that, a decrease in T3 and T4 should cause an increase in the release of TSH to tell the body to make more. So knowing what we know now about the biofeedback loop and the thyroid hormones, let's talk about the specific underlying pathophysiology of hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is caused by the overproduction, overexposure, or oversecretion of the thyroid hormones T3 and T4. The main cause of hyperthyroidism in the United States is Graves' disease, which is believed to be caused by an autoimmune process that activates TSH receptors in the thyroid gland. This then leads to thyroid hyperplasia, which presents as a goiter, and an increased production of T4 and T3. For symptoms, remember that in hyperthyroidism, all the metabolic processes are sped up. Common symptoms and findings here would be weight loss, heat intolerance, diarrhea, blurry or double vision, tremors, palpitations or tachycardia, decreased menstrual flow, anxiety or irritability, and even a goiter. So why is it important to treat hyperthyroidism? Well, long-term consequences of hyperthyroidism include cardiac disease, osteoporosis, and infertility. And just to make a quick note, Hyperthyroidism is usually treated by specialists in endocrinology as it requires specific medications, radioactive iodine, or even surgery to treat. Now, let's talk about the opposite, hypothyroidism. In the United States, Hashimoto thyroiditis is an autoimmune condition that causes most cases of primary hypothyroidism. 
In hypothyroidism, all the metabolic processes are slowed down. So common symptoms and findings here might be weight gain, cold intolerance, constipation, hair loss or brittle nails, delayed reflexes, bradycardia, menorrhagia, facial swelling, and possibly even a goiter as well. So why is it important to treat hypothyroidism? Well, the long-term consequences include heart disease, anemia, impaired digestion, menstrual regularities and infertility, and even delayed puberty in children. Primary hypothyroidism can be managed in primary care through supplemental thyroid hormone replacement medications like levothyroxine, also known as Synthroid. Beyond primary hypothyroidism, a referral to endocrinology should be made. And there are lots more endocrine-related topics to nail down for your exams. But I hope you found this review helpful and feel more confident in understanding the thyroid hormone biofeedback loop and the pathophysiology of hyper and hypothyroidism. If you are interested in learning more about how to pass boards and other endocrine topics, definitely check out our review courses. And if you want to join a wonderful free community of students prepping just like you, make sure you join our Facebook group. Here are the sources for more information. And you are so close to becoming a real deal NP. Make sure to check out all our other videos. We believe with the right preparation, you can totally pass your boards. We are all rooting for you here at SMNP Reviews.